it's a new season it's a new day for those of you all who are tuning in it's a new season it's a new day all things have passed away the arguments from yesterday the negative name calling the crazy behavior all of that dismiss it tell yourself that was yesterday today is a new day every time the thought comes into your mind about what you should have said what you could have said how you could have done things differently you say today's a new day today is a new day no mind not today I'm not going there I'm not going to keep speaking about things that happened in the past I'm not going to keep talking to these people about what transpired because the more I keep talking to relatives and friends the more upset I get and I just don't do the things I'm supposed to so no mind not today I'm not going to do it today you see sometimes you got to talk to yourself like that sometimes you have to forgive yourself too because some of you all hold on to sins you hold on to things that other people have done to you and then you hold on to things that you've done to other people therefore you cannot prosper you cannot grow you can't grow in your relationship your relationship is stagnant it's dead because you keep holding things against the person that you're with then you look at your relationship with your children they don't draw near to you because you don't draw near to them because you're still holding on to the fact that they lied they cheated they stole they did this they did that we've got to train up children we've got to be the ones to tell people how we feel about things we've got to be the ones to set up boundaries a person doesn't know how to deal with you if you don't set up the necessary boundaries you don't talk to them about the requirements you don't give them any type of inkling as to what they should or shouldn't be doing and for some of you all who already know who already gave people the bottom line and they still choose to keep doing things to hurt you you've got to do everything in your power to stop the hurt some people have to do some drastic things like pick up and move other people have to start taking things away from folks who keep using and abusing them you say well I don't want to hear their mouths I don't want them to say this to me or I don't want any uh, backlash as a result of things that I do well you're gonna to have to go to the Lord in Jesus name and build up your faith because if you don't then you're gonna worry about what the devil was doing when a soldier goes into war, he's not worried about what the enemy is going to do. He doesn't worry himself about it. Instead, he trains. He trains to deal with the enemy. He prepares for the enemy. So if the enemy is going to take something away from you, or he's going to try to do some things to make your life more difficult, you've got to train for that outcome. You've got to be prepared. Some of you all, I'm hearing in the spirit, preparation, preparation, preparation. You haven't been preparing yourself. And so that's why the enemy's doing what he's doing to you. The enemy is working on a supernatural basis. And when he's working on a supernatural basis, he starts touching those around you. Those that are vulnerable, those that are weak, those that don't know God like you know. So that's why they're able to have enough strength to be able to uh, do the things that they do to you. Because they're influenced. They're influenced by Satan. You're influenced by the Lord. They're influenced by Satan. And so you have a battle of good and evil going on. No matter what you say, there's the attitude. No matter what you do, there's the negative comment. These people are not walking in the light. They're walking in darkness. And so instead of focusing on them, the Lord says focus on him for the battle plan. Focus on him for the way out. Focus on him for the information that you need. To get you to where you need to be. You see. This is what we have to do. We have to take up our reins church. We've got to be strong in the Lord church. We have to know God's word. You see. Some of us need to be reminded that in John chapter 1 verse 1. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. So when we need a word. From the Lord. We've got to go to the one who created words you see that's where the power is he knows all of those minute details as to what gets things going in the spiritual realm you wouldn't go to a friend 
that doesn't have that kind of power, right? If you were to go and need something uh, taken care of at a store, you don't go to the clerk who screwed up your order, right? You would go to the manager. And then if the manager couldn't help you, then you would work your way up the chain, right? Well, that's the way it is with the Lord. When there's something that we need, we have to work our way up the chain of command. The Holy Spirit speaks to us. He tells us what we ought to do. We receive Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior so that that power can be manifested over our life. And then Jesus, in turn, talks to the Father for us. Because we're too dirty and we're too sinful, we can't just go straight to the Father. We've got to hear from the Spirit. The Spirit then receives His Word from Jesus. And then Jesus goes to the Father with our requests. So you can't bypass Jesus. You can't say, well, He's just a prophet and He's just another person just like us. You can't do that. We've got to be... We've got to go through Jesus in order to get to the Lord, to the creators, to the one who created the words that we speak. Okay. Yeah, man came up with his various techniques and so on and so forth. But when it comes down to the idea, it comes from the Lord. So go to the one that has the power, the power of your speech to get things done in Jesus name. I'm hearing done for some of you all get it done, get it done, get it done. Old relationships, get it done, get your paperwork done. Those of you all who have some things that's still hanging out there, get it done in Jesus name. The Lord is tired of using people to tell you to get stuff done. You're dragging your feet because you don't know what the future holds. You're dragging your feet because you're not sure what you want to do in your present life. There's no sense in carrying on uncertainty. All you have to do is just go to the Lord. The Lord said, get it done. There you have it. You needed confirmation. You had already received that word. All I'm doing is just validating it in Jesus name and agreeing with the Lord. Get it done. Too much, too much is happening in the spiritual realm. I'm hearing the Lord say that some of you all that need to get some things done aren't getting your work complete at work. And so pretty soon your job is going to be done. Some of you all are not handling your children the way you're supposed to handle them. And pretty soon there will be some people cutting off relationships just because of your children. They're going to say, I'm sorry, but I'm done with this. The key word to some of the speech that is happening around you is the word done. When you hear that word, your antenna should be going up because the Lord is dealing with some people. I'm done. You're done. She's done. He's done. You hear those words. You better be watching and praying. All right, moving on. We have to deal with our issues when it comes to this faith that we have. And and some of us got issues about faith because we don't want to trust in the Lord. We don't want to lean on him. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3, it says, By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Your life, my life. We have to just believe that the Lord commanded us to walk this earth. We have to believe that God commanded this earth to come into being. That it wasn't just by happenstance. That it wasn't just because two people made love one day and you came. There was more to it. Now man can give you all his explanations and all his reasons for, you, for your existence, for the earth's existence. But when it comes down to it, we know that there's a creator. There's just too many things that man doesn't understand. He can't come up with. He can't create. No matter how many telescopes he comes up with, you just cannot look at what man says and, and then say that it's fact, period, end of discussion. That is shallow thinking. That is illogical. You don't have enough facts to support the things that you're talking about. 
that you want other people to uh, agree with you on. You see, you want other people when I speak to uh, people directly who's listening to this audio recording, it applies to some of you, but to others, it doesn't. But you want people to believe in things that you can't even back up, that you don't even have facts. The Lord tells us about spreading false rumors, gossip and lies. Back up what you're saying. Conduct your own personal studies, your own personal interviews. Find out truth for yourself. Do the research. Stop going with what the minister says and only what the minister says, both on TV and off of television. The problem is we're spreading scriptures and we're spreading commentary and even cliches that God hasn't even supported. And when I say scriptures, I'm talking about the twisted ones. I'm not talking about the Holy Spirit inspired scriptures. I'm talking about the twisted ones where man takes certain Bibles and then he puts in all of his opinion in between the lines of text, as opposed to teaching you. He tries to put his words in the Bible so that he looks like the authority. So when you're looking at a study Bible, you want to make sure that God's word is at the top. Man's commentary is at the bottom. And a lot of times his commentary is too broad a lot of times he's saying things that the scripture isn't saying he's reading into things that the scripture just isn't saying so you have to be careful when you're looking at your various study bibles you're going to have to be careful when you're listening to different people including what i'm saying sometimes being that we have so much on our mind as humans we start saying things that digress away from scripture and so when we do we've got to be able to filter out the things that are related to the Lord and the things that are related to man and woman so if I'm talking about my personal experience sometimes my personal experiences doesn't have anything to do with the scriptures so you have to know when I'm switching in between the scriptures and when I'm just giving you personal commentary and that's the way we should be when we're listening to those big names and those people that just because they have a lot of dollars doesn't make them an authority on anything. We've got to be very, very particular about who we're listening to. Am I leading you toward Jesus or am I leading you toward me? Am I leading you toward the higher calling or am I trying to get you on board with my higher calling? You see, so you've got to Make sure that you know exactly who is saying what and how they're broadcasting it to you. And you want to be willing to do all that God wants you to do. Okay, so another scripture that comes to mind to those of you all who are going through some things is Romans 8.28. And those of you all who are very familiar with this scripture know That all things work together for good. In the NIV version it says. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him. Who have been called according to his purpose. Okay. All things. All things. Okay. That means negative as well as positive. You went down one wrong path. But then you ended up on a righteous path. God took what was wrong and he worked it out for your good. You loved him and therefore he went on and he said, I'm going to give you this and I'm going to give you that and anything else you need to get you to where you need to be. And that is knowing what my will is for your life. Now, some of you all don't know what God's will is. Why? Because you've been so caught up in all of these people talking to you and all of this twisted doctrine. Some of you all are so busy putting your money toward the prosperity messages that you're failing to understand that there's a relationship that you must have with the Lord. 
So you need to know the will of the Lord and how you do that is you seek him in his scriptures. You seek him. That means you look up all the scriptures related to God and who he is and what he's about. And you apply those scriptures to the issues that are currently going on in your life. That way it makes the Bible more active in your life and you're more interested in learning. But if you're not taking anything that's going on with your life and talking to the Lord about those issues, as well as trying to understand how God would deal with these issues that you're faced with, then you're not going to know what his will is. And you're going to actually be so confused and so tired of reading your Bible that you just won't do anything that you're supposed to. And God wants us to draw near to him, not away from him. But some people will draw you away from the Lord because they want you to join their organization. They want you to go to their Bible studies. They want you to partake of these activities that are not worshiping the Lord. They want you to watch this television and watch that movie that has nothing to do with what your higher calling is. And when you spend more time chasing after everything else and not enough time Focus on the word of the Lord. You will not know what his will is for your life. For some of us, it took years. It took years because God said every time we thought we knew, he said, you're not ready yet. You're not ready yet. And so because of that, we have to sometimes something that should have only took what? 40 days. Remember that in the Exodus it takes 40 years to get to the promise that of God it can take you four days or it could take you 40 days. It just all depends on what you're willing to do in the meantime. And in the meantime, a lot of us is stuffing our faces and we're watching television shows and we're hanging out with people. That's not about God's business who are not serious. They say they love the Lord and that's about all they say. And that's about all they do is say, I love the Lord in the discussion. You try to encourage them to talk about the Lord. They don't want to talk about the Lord. You try to, um, uh, Tell them about various online studies and things that they could do offline to stay in the word of the Lord. They're not interested when they're at work. They focus on their job. And then in between time, when they have those breaks, they're talking about things that have nothing to do with the Lord. On your break, it is your time. If somebody sits in your presence at a lunch table Find a way to squeeze in something about the Lord. Oh, yesterday I was praying and God said, let the Lord move you to speak on what he told you and how it might benefit them. They show you a picture. Oh, that's nothing but a miracle of the Lord. You know how to squeeze in God. But some people, they want to just, oh, oh, no, I just I just want to talk about myself or I want to talk about my kids or I want to talk about what the boss said, never thinking about the Lord. And the Lord sees you and he hears you. Some of us, we're going through all sorts of cursing. That's another issue I'm hearing in the spiritual realm. All sorts of cursing. You got witches. They, they got spells. They're cast, casting all sorts of spells because they want your man or they want your woman. <laughs> because you got some of them. Then you got people that's cursing you in that other way. You know, the street cursing. What the this and what the that and bleep, bleep, bleep and all of that. And you're, you're getting tired of that. And you're saying to yourself, I need to stop it myself. I need to stop cursing. I need to stop in my mind saying crazy stuff about people, places and things. Let me tell you that there comes a, pl comes a point in our lives where we've got to make up in our minds that Okay, in order for me to get there, I'm going to have to stop doing certain things. So that might mean stop talking to certain people on the phone because your ear is very sensitive. It's very personal. If somebody's doing a bunch of cussing in your ear, it's the same thing as if I was there with you right now whispering in your ear. It's very personal, isn't it? And so you holding up a phone to your ear with somebody blasting a whole bunch of curse words. And maybe they're not blasting a whole bunch. Maybe it's just a few. 
Sometimes you've got to distance yourself, even from those that only use a few, because you've got to get strong. You've got to get strong. How do you get strong? You just start looking at things and reading things that don't have any curse words in them. Some people you can't get away from, but what you can do is tell yourself, not today. I'm not receiving that today. I don't want that in my ear today. Take it away in Jesus name. Build a fence of protection all around my ears. Let me not be moved by these curse words that they're saying. And as you begin to walk more and more with the Lord, he's going to gradually just start removing words out of people's mouths. They're going to come to you and they're going to say, oops, I didn't mean to say that. Oh, I'm sorry. And some of us. We're just going to receive cursing anyway. David received it. In 2 Samuel 16 verse 12, he said, It may be that the Lord will see my distress and repay me with good for the cursing I am receiving today. So he didn't look at it like, oh man, he's cursing me out. Now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do him in. Because some of the people actually wanted to do the man in that was cursing King David. But no, mm-mm. No, you don't have to do anybody in. You don't have to, even though their words sound real cutting and it and it and people are looking at you and they're having all sorts of strange facial expressions because somebody said all of that to you. You don't have to go there. Think about what David said. I, you know, I, I hope that the Lord is going to repay me with good for all this cursing that I'm receiving today. Jesus, you must be right around the corner. It must be something that you're going to give me, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're going to work something out. That's why the devil's standing before me with all this cursing because he's trying to just drain my spirit and block me from a blessing. Uh-uh, not today, Jesus. Call out his name. There's a song my children and I sing every now and again. And it's real simple. And I heard it at a church that I visited up in Pittsburgh sometime back. Call out his name, Jesus. Call out his name, Jesus. Call out his name, Jesus. And he will answer you. Call out his name, Jesus. Call out his name, Jesus. Call out his name, Jesus. And for some of you, he will run to you. Mm -hmm. Some of you all need that. You need it. You need it. We bind in spirits in Jesus name. We bind in ugliness in Jesus name. We're binding all of those things, Lord Jesus, that people have put upon us today. Things, Lord Jesus, that are ugly, things that are not about you, things, Lord Jesus, that have caused us sometimes to fall away, things that have caused us to lose faith, Lord. We're just binding up those spirits, binding up all those spirits that said that we wasn't about nothing, that we wasn't going to be about you or anything else, that all we were going to do was just sit there and watch a little television program or sit there and just just cause problems for people. But no, that's not what we're doing. We're going. We're going in Jesus name toward the higher calling. We're trusting in you. We're believing in you. There are people right now, even in my atmosphere, Lord, that don't like me, that have been talking negative about me, that said some things years back about me and thought that they were not going to be rebuked. They thought that they were going to be dealing with just another silly woman, just another foolish person. But, oh, they didn't know about the God that I serve. They didn't know about my praise and my worship. They didn't know, Lord Jesus, who I was in you. But, Lord Jesus, they're going to reap what they have sown in the past. They're going to see, Lord Jesus, how you will deal with those, Lord Jesus, who speak against God's chosen. Lord Jesus. Those, Lord, that are not about your business, Lord, we're asking, Lord, that they will just come to know you, that they will draw near to you this day, that they will not be by themselves in this walk any longer, but that they will look to their friends in Christ 
and that they will embrace their friends and just know that you are with them every step of the way. We ask, Lord, for those that are unsaved, for those that need to rededicate their lives to Christ, that this day that they will put their hands up and praise and worship you in Jesus' name. And thank you for their eyes, their nose, their mouth, their voice, their walk, their talk, Lord. That they will just come to you, Lord Jesus, and receive you. That they will ask this day, Lord, come into my life. Jesus, come into my life. Indwell me with the Holy Spirit. Cause me, Lord Jesus, to stop doing what I'm doing that's not of you. To turn from my wicked ways. Lord Jesus, I want a relationship with you. I'm tired of these relationships with men and women that are fruitless. That are not uplifting. That are not encouraging. But are discouraging me. Lord Jesus, I need to walk with you. Lord Jesus, I want you in my life. I'm tired of listening to everybody else talking about how God is doing this and doing that in their lives. I want to be one of the chosen. Lord Jesus, I want to be called to do your will. So Lord, lead me to the right scriptures. Lord, I'm opening up my Bible today. Lord, meet me there. Meet me there. Move my hands to the scriptures that I need to read today. Move my feet. To the place of well fellowship that I need to be in. Lord Jesus. Move my voice to speak the kind of things this day and in the future that need to be said to those around me. Lord Jesus. Cause me to stop holding on to past hurts. Put a spirit in me of forgiveness. And cause me, Lord, to be better. To be a better person. Mentally, physically, and spiritually. I ask all these things. In your son's precious name, Jesus. And may the church say, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because that is the highest form of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Whether you agree or disagree, know that God sees you. Know that God hears you. Know that God is the same today and forevermore. Thank you for listening.